uh, praise God, God is so good. Amen. I'm excited to share today. Uh, last week, I spoke about the, the gospel and that it was a rock-solid gospel, a rock-solid foundation. And uh, we're going to continue along that lines for the next, well, this week. And, uh, well, next week, I think we're, we're I'm pretty sure we're going to have a guest minister in. If not, then I'll be preaching also on that as well. But, uh, you know, praise God, you've got to start out on the right foundation. Amen? Amen. And the right foundation is Jesus. <laughs> Faith in Christ. Faith in Christ alone. He's the right foundation. But, you know, there's a lot of people, they will teach faith in Jesus. That's how you get saved. You know, they'll say, it's faith in Jesus. But once you get faith in Jesus, now you've got to work to keep your salvation. And that's not true. Our salvation was paid in full. And that's the, the, the title of this message. Paid in full. Jesus, He covered it all. He took care of all the expenses. He became impoverished so that we could be rich in Him. Amen? And so, we're, we're going to be talking about being, you know, us being paid in full. You know, the Bible says we were bought with a price. It means Jesus, He paid it all. We, we, we aren't half bought. We're completely bought. I belong to Jesus. Amen? And if you've been born again, you belong to Him too. You've been bought. You've been paid for in full. Hallelujah. See, faith in Christ is the only thing that uh, faith in Christ is the only thing that God requires for salvation. <laughs> Good works cannot purchase salvation and are not required to maintain it. Salvation is the free gift of God. Amen? It's paid in full. In 1 Peter, or 2 Peter 2, starting in verse 1, it says, But there were also false prophets among the people, even as that there will be false teachers among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them. You hear that? Who bought them. Amen. And bring on themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways, because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemy. And so, we want, we want the way of truth to, to be revealed. Because it's the truth. The Bible says, ye shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Amen? It's not anything that we call the truth. It's the truth. It's the truth of the gospel. And that's what we're going to be looking at again today. Because there, there are people who would want to put us in bondage again. They, they kind of remind me of the Pharisees who wanted to put works along with Christ. Yes, receive Jesus, but also get, you know, do all the works of the law. And, and that's not, Paul battled that. That is not the gospel. And praise God, it's all about Jesus. All about Him. See, Lordship salvation is a destructive heresy that teaches faith in, in Christ is not enough to be saved. Faith in Christ is not enough to be saved. A sinner must be willing to stop living in sin and maintain good works in order to be saved and to stay saved. Now, here, here's a thought, okay? Dogs, by nature, bark, right? Is that right? Yes. Dogs don't meow. Do they meow? I, I've never heard one. I'd be a little frightened if a dog went, you know? You're like, whoa, wait a minute. And cats, they don't bark. And why? Because it's not in their nature. Their, their nature cannot do that. That's not A dog is a dog and a cat is a cat. Well, it's the same way with us. To, to tell a sinner who's not born again, not a new creation, you have to give up your sin in order to get saved makes no sense because that's what they are. They're sinners and they sin. A sinner is not required to give up their sin. A sinner is required to place their faith in Christ, who bore their sin on the cross. Amen? Jesus paid the price in full. It's all about Jesus. It begins with Jesus, and it ends with Jesus. Amen? See, if we were required to, to stop sinning, 
Has anyone here reached that point yet? <laughs> I haven't. Hallelujah. You know? It, it, you know, here's the thing. There are sins of commission, which means there are sins that we know that are wrong, and we, but we end up doing them. But then there's also sins of omission. There's things that we do that are that sin, and we don't, didn't even realize we did them. How can we repent of sins of omission? You know, it, it just doesn't work that way. Oh, uh, you know. And then, you know, did you read your Bible long enough today? Did you pray long enough yesterday? Did, did you do the good things that you were supposed to do the day before? You know, the Bible says that if you know to do good and you don't do it, it's sin to you. Okay, so how many here are, are perfectly free from sin in the, in the flesh? I don't see one hand. That's good. Because we are still dealing with the flesh. Jesus did not come and, and die on the cross to perfect our flesh. He came to perfect our spirits. Amen? Amen. Praise God. You know, we are not supposed to be paying for our salvation. Jesus already paid for it. It would be like me buying a car, giving it to you, and then saying, now you make, and, and saying, this is a free gift. And then saying, but you need to make car payments on it. And if you don't make car payments on it, then somebody's going to come and repossess the car. That's not paid in full. Amen? It's not paid in full. Because if it was paid in full, no one's going to repossess it. But, but yet people say, well, Jesus, he died on the cross for your sins. Your sins are paid in full, but now you've got to do good works or you're going to lose your salvation. It's going to be repossessed. You know? It makes utterly no sense. Either Jesus paid it all, or he didn't pay any of it. He paid it all. I'm, t I'm here to tell you, he took care of you. You are covered. Amen. 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 Glory to God. See, see, um, you know, that would not be a gift if I did that. It, it, would, it would not be a free gift. Let's put it that way. See, if you're still making payments on your car, then it's not paid off. You know, if you're still making payments on your salvation, you're, you're, you're doing the works, then, then it's not paid off. But it's, I'm here to tell you today, Jesus paid it off. Amen. On the cross, He paid it off. Amen. And um, in Romans 4, starting in verse 3, it says, For what does the Scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. But to him who does not work, but believes on him, who justifies the ungodly, his faith is accounted for righteousness. Isn't that an awesome truth? It's not about what you do. It's about what Jesus did. Amen. Amen. And you know, and, and think about this. Think about Abraham. Abraham, God took Abraham out. And he, he showed him the stars in the sky. And he said, this is what your descendants are going to be like. And Abraham believed him. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now, Abraham didn't do any good deeds to get that righteousness. It was just believing God. I mean, Abraham, honestly, he, he, he was a flawed individual. He was. He was a flawed individual. And I thank God that he was a flawed individual. Because I'm a flawed individual. Hallelujah. And you're flawed individuals too. Amen. Just ask the wife. Or ask the husband. <laughs> or ask the parents. The you know? They can tell you that there's imperfections in all of us. Amen. Amen. I mean, Abraham, what did he do? He, he went, and they were going into Egypt. And he goes, and, and he, says, he tells Sarah, Say that you're my sister. So that Pharaoh doesn't kill me. Because you're so beautiful. And, and so he lied. He lied to Pharaoh. And he gave his wife to Pharaoh. God had to give Pharaoh some pretty wicked dreams. He says, if you touch her, you're a dead man. Abraham gave, or Pharaoh gave Abraham back his wife. You know? I mean, Abraham did not do everything right. He was not accounted righteous because of all the good things he did. Well, you know, what about, you know, God made the promise. Your seed's going to come through, 
through, you know, your wife Sarah. But, you know, he goes to Hagar. He gets an Ishmael. You know, what went wrong there? And all this happened before he was accounted righteous. He was not accounted righteous because of all the good things. And the law wasn't even in motion at that point. So, so Abraham, he didn't obey the law to become righteous either. He, he was just like us. Amen? He believed God. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. Amen. But now people want to put you under the law or put you under all these rules. If you don't do all these good things, then all of a sudden, you know, you, you lose the salvation. Uh, Jesus paid you all. I think that that totally misrepresents Jesus. When people say that you have to earn your way to salvation, what they're really saying is Jesus was not enough. And that is not the gospel. That is not the truth. <laughs> Amen? In Romans chapter 5, verse 15, it says, But the free gift is not like the offense. For if by one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, abounded to men. And so, you know, this says the free gift means... What does free mean? Can anybody tell what free means? It means you co it costs you nothing. nothing. Amen. Nothing. It's all about Jesus. He paid the price. And we accept what he paid. Remember last week I spoke about what you know a false gospel is. That we do the work, God accepts it, and we get the credit. That's a false gospel. The true gospel is this. Jesus did the work on the cross. We accept it by faith, and He gets the credit. Amen. Uh, that, that is life transforming, and they are completely opposite. Amen? It's about what Jesus did, not about what we do. Amen? Where works didn't get you saved, and works won't keep you saved. Amen? Good or bad. Now, let's turn real quick to, to Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18, verse 9. This is where, um, a, this, this is where a, a, a man was, was a Pharisee was actually leaning on his own righteousness. And um, then there was a tax collector, and we know that he, he was just a mess. And this is an example that Jesus gave. Starting verse 9, also, he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous. That's called self-righteousness. I've done enough. I've read my Bible enough. I've tithed enough. I've gone to church enough. I've done all these things. You know, I've earned my righteousness. And, and the thing is, that, that kind of people, they, they look down on others. They despise others. It says here, they trusted that they were righteous and despised others. And that's what happens when you think that you're righteous, then you also look down. See, if, if I've earned my salvation by works, then I'll look at everybody else and say, you know what? You didn't do nearly as much as I did. You can do more. So now, you, you, want, you want to be saved? Do more. I'll encourage you, you know, read the Bible five hours a day. Pray ten hours a day. And, and, and if that's not enough, then we'll just up it. You know, when is it ever enough? Amen. It's, it will never be enough. Jesus is enough. That's, that's what it comes down to. Amen. Jesus said this. He said, two men went up to the temple to pray. One, a Pharisee, the other, a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself. God, I thank you that I am not like other men. Extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give my tithes, tithes of all that I possess. And the tax collector, standing afar off, would not so much as raise his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humbled. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. Pretty powerful. 
See, the, there's another scripture I'm going to share with you. It's in Matthew. And I've heard this scripture misused and abused. And we're going to see what, what this, the true meaning of this is right here. This, this scripture has put the fear into so many people. And, and it's because the way it's been preached has been preached wrong. In Matthew chapter 7. Verse 21 through 23. Jesus says this, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Cast out demons in your name? And done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Now, think about this. They're coming to Jesus on the basis of what they've done. Look what I've done. Lord, Lord, I've done this. I've prophesied in your name. I've cast out demons in your name. I've done... The, they've earned their way to God that way. You know? The... We've got to come to Jesus not on what we've done, but on what He's done. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, and so, you know, um, the, there's another scripture. It says in John, it's, it's not up there, but it's John 6 29. It says, This is the work of God that you believe in Him whom He sent. This is the work of God. And, and Robert shared this with me at the end of the message last week. It was just really powerful. This is the work of God that you that you believe in Him who sent. Uh, uh, believe in Him whom He sent. Amen. Believe in Jesus. That's the work of God, right there. Because they were saying, "What do we have to do to work the works of God?" And Jesus is saying, "You got to believe in Me. That's it. That's it. Praise God." See, they were on a works mentality. Jesus said, "Saying it's all about Me. It's all about Me. Believe in Me." 1 John 3, 23. And this is his command. So, so, you know, this scripture where it says, do the will of the Father. Well, what's the will of the Father? The will of the Father is to receive his Son, ultimately. It's to receive his Son. And this is his command in, in 1 John 3, 23. That we should believe on the name of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. That is the commandment. And you cannot do the second one unless you've first done the, the first one. Because once you receive Jesus, the Bible says that the love of God has been shed abroad in your hearts by the Holy Spirit. You cannot love the unlovable with natural human love. You've got to be born again. You've got to have the love of God on the inside of you. And then you can love the unlovable. Agape love. The world does not possess agape love. But the church does because we got it through the Spirit. Amen? Amen. Romans chapter 5 tells us that we receive the Spirit. We, we receive love. It was shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. 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 You know, there's been times when I've gone out witnessing, and um, what, what happened was I would share the gospel with people, and they would say, oh yeah, I'm saved. And I would say, how do you know you're saved? And then they'll give me, well, I go to church, I'm a good person, uh, I do all the right things, I pray before I go to bed at night, you know, I'm, a, I, I'm nice to people. And, and so then I asked them the question, I said, so when you get to heaven, and you enter up to the gate, and say God was to ask you a question, what, you know, why should I let you in? To the kingdom. And, you know, that's what they would tell them. Well, you know what? That's not going to get it done. Because they're coming on the basis of what they did. I've done this. I've done that. I've gone to church. I, I've paid my tithes. All these things. Well, you know, all these things are good things. And we should do these things. But they are not what gets you into the kingdom of God. What gets you into the kingdom of God is your faith in Jesus. If, if, you, if they go to heaven and they're standing before the door and, and God asks them that question, what they need to say is, I'm entering in because of what Jesus did, his work. I believe what Jesus did. Amen. Not about anything about what I did. 
<laughs> because all of my righteousness, self-righteousness, is as filthy rags in God's sight. That's the way he sees my self-righteousness, as filthy rags. I'm not going by my righteousness. I'm going by Jesus' righteousness. Amen? The Bible tells us that he who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Amen? It's the righteousness of God in Christ. That's what gets you in. Not your own righteousness. Amen? Praise God. Isn't God good? You know, in, in John 3.16... It says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. God so loved that He gave. Amen? God loves us. He gave His Son. And if we believe in Jesus, then we will not perish, we'll have everlasting life. That is the will of God. That is the whole purpose of why Jesus came in the very first place. John the Baptist said it so beautifully. Behold, the Son of God, who, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. You know? Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Hallelujah. Glory to God. No, this is good news. This is such good news, it's almost too good to be true. It's, it's almost too good to be true, good news. Amen? Wow. See, I didn't earn salvation, so I can't forfeit my salvation. Jesus did it for me. Amen. Hallelujah. And so, uh, salvation is not about, salvation is about receiving, not giving. Eternal life is a free gift of God given through faith in Christ alone. That's what eternal life is. It's a free gift of God given through faith in Christ alone. You know, if some if somebody's drowning, you don't want to be sitting on shore and yelling out to them and, and telling them, these are the ten rules to floating. <laughs> you know, these are the ten rules to floating. If, if you do these ten rules, you'll make it. I'm here to tell you that there is no one who has ever been able to float. <laughs> Nobody. Everybody's gone down. That's why the Bible says, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There's only one person who could ever do it. His name is Jesus. And he did it for you, and he did it for me. Amen? So what I would do is throw them the life preserver. Does anyone here know what the life preserver is called? Jesus. Jesus. Amen. You, you say, grab a hold of the life preserver. Grab a hold of Jesus. And you'll live. And that is salvation. You're going down. Ten, ten rules to floating is not going to save you. No, no one has ever been saved by them. And when I say ten rules of floating, that, I'm talking about the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments are, are, are good and righteous, but they're unattainable. Nobody has ever been able to live perfectly under the Ten Commandments except for Jesus. That's it. Amen? It's all about Jesus. No one's ever been able to save themselves by, by their actions. We get saved by Jesus' actions. <coughs> Glory to God. And so, we're, we're, bottom line is this, we're saved for good works, not because of them. In Ephesians 2, 8, I, I love how this puts it. And in verse 9, of course, and it says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. You're saved not by what you've done, but by receiving the free gift of God by faith in Christ. That's it. Amen? And then in the very next verse, it says that we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. We're not, we're not created by good works. We're created for good works. See, when, when you get born again, then you're a new creation. You have a new nature. And, and God expects you to live out of that new nature, the, the, the new creation. Amen? For, you know, and then we know 2 Corinthians 5, 
17, it says, If anyone be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new, and all things are of God. And it goes on to talk about how we were reconciled to the Father. Amen? Maybe I'll, maybe I'll touch on that either next week or, or the following week. But, uh, you know, it's, it's just important that we understand it's not of works. Anyone who wants to put you, and I'm, I'm telling you, anyone who wants to put you into a works mentality <laughs> is not preaching the gospel. They are just absolutely not preaching the gospel. They're preaching a false gospel. Because... You know, it's a, it, it's like saying Jesus plus something. No, it's just Jesus. Amen? Amen. Amen. See, faith, not works, equals salvation. Let's look at, at, at the scripture that I misquoted last week. <clears throat> and I'm going to turn to it this week. Amen? But it's in Romans 10. Romans 10, 9 and 10. It says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That doesn't mention anything about the law. It doesn't mention anything about your good deeds or your works. It's all about your faith in Jesus, confessing to Him. Amen? Amen. And, and a little further down, in verses 13 and 14, it says, For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in Him in whom, of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they... they and I mean, I can go, go down further. How shall they preach unless one is sent? So, so it's, it's about hearing the gospel. It's about believing the gospel. And it's about receiving salvation. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is so good. Alright. So, here, here's the thing. People who teach a works salvation, what they teach is that we are in the process of being saved. You know? So all our life, we have to continue all these good works in order to be saved. But see, the works, that's just the fruit. It's, Jesus changed the root. See, the root problem was your spirit. Your spirit was messed up. You, you, you got a brand new spirit when you received Jesus. Amen. Jesus changed the root, and now we can produce His fruit. Amen? Almost a tongue twister there. But salvation is instantaneous. The moment you believe, you have eternal life. It's instantaneous. So it's not like, well, today I did good, I'm saved. Tomorrow, I'm, I'm going to probably miss it, so I'm unsaved. You know? I'm saved, I'm unsaved, I'm saved, I'm unsaved. I was good yesterday, but probably tomorrow I'll be bad, so I'll be unsaved. I just got to get born again, again, born again, again, born again, again. That's not the truth. The truth is, is that born, being born again was instantaneous. It's, it's an instantaneous salvation. It's not evolution. You're not evolving into salvation. You know, I'm going to produce enough good works that I'll just... You know, when I die, everything's going to be bliss. No, it's what Jesus did. See, we don't work our way to salvation. We believe God for salvation. Being born again is not a process. It's instantaneous. In, first, in John 1, 12 and 13, it says, But as many as received Him, okay, the moment you received Him, to them, he gave the right to become children of God to those who believe in His name, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. When did we become His children? When did we become a child of God? When were we born of God? The moment we received Him. The moment you received Jesus. You're, you're not trying to 
be perfected. Jesus in the realm of the Spirit has already made you perfected with His perfection. With His righteousness. Amen? His righteousness is what brings eternal life. Glory to God. In 1 John 5, verse 1. Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. Amen? Amen? Whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ, they're born again. Amen? Amen? Just like natural birth. You know, and, and we know from recent experience, it's instantaneous. You're, you're not birthing your whole life. There, there's an end of the process and a baby. Amen? Praise God. And, and uh, you know, it's the same way with us. When we were born again, that was it. We were born again. Of in, the Bible says of incorruptible seed by the word of God. So, whoever believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves him who begot also loves him who is begotten of. See, repentance is... Here, and I was asked this question, and I was like, well, you know, you said repentance isn't required for salvation. Well, repentance of sin is not required. Repentance towards God is required. Re repentance... See, well, you've got to realize what repentance means. When you look up in the Strong's Concords, it means a change of mind. I once was trusted in myself. Now I repent. I'm trusting in Christ. Amen. Amen. Because there's no way you will ever repent of all your sins that you've ever committed. I can't remember all mine. And what about all the ones that you committed that you didn't even know about? The sins of omission. You, can you repent all those? So if, if your salvation is based upon repenting all your sins, man, that, that's a long process. What if you forget one? You don't get to You know? It's, it's about Jesus. Amen? See, repentance is faith in Christ, not in our good works. Repentance means a change of mind. Repentance is putting our faith in Christ for salvation. In Acts 20, verse 21, it says, Testifying to the Jews and also the Greeks, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. See, repentance is important in the life of a believer. We do need to repent of our sins, but it's, it's so that we can live a sanctified life. Not that we get saved. It's, we, yeah, I believe in repenting our sins, you know, confessing our sins, but that is so that we can have fellowship with God. We, see, when you get born again, you have a relationship with, with Him. But, but when we step out into known sin... Sometimes we break fellowship with Him. And through repentance, we're reestablishing that connection. He doesn't leave us. We left Him, in a sense. But, but the relationship's still there. We're still God's child. Amen? Amen. Amen. See, Mark 1, verse 15, it says, And say, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent. And believe in the gospel. Repent. Change your mind and believe in the gospel. That's what the word of God is saying. Repentance from your unbelief to faith in Christ. <clears throat> Glory to God. Amen. In Matthew 21, 32. For John came to you in the way of righteousness, and you did not believe him. But tax collectors and harlots believed him. And when you saw it, you did not afterward relent and believe him. They didn't change their mind about him. They, they, they didn't repent. They didn't relent from, from their unbelief. They didn't relent from that and believe him. See? See, and here, here's a really good thought here. Judas, okay, the son of perdition, the one who betrayed Jesus, the one who, who, who sent Jesus to the cross, he, the Bible says, in Matthew 27, verses 3 through 6, it says that he confessed his sin. He actually said that he, he did wrong, and he, he even regretted it. But he didn't place his faith in God. See, repentance of your sin doesn't get you saved. Faith in God does. Faith in Christ and, and the Bible says that he went and hung himself. 
See, it's, it's not about repenting of all your sins. It's about placing your faith in the one who died on the cross for all your sins. Amen. 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 That's true repentance. That's re repentance. Well, both of them are true repentance, but that's the repentance that gets you saved. It's your faith in Christ and in Christ alone. Amen? I mean, he, he even returned the 30 pieces of silver that he sold Jesus. He regretted it. He returned the 30 pieces of silver, and, and he, can, he, uh, he regretted it. But that wasn't enough. Amen? It's about faith in Christ. I mean, Peter betrayed Christ three times. He, 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 he even cussed. The Bible says he even cussed. But yet, he, his faith remained in Christ. And he was restored to fellowship with Christ. Amen? God is good. We, we saw last week the thief on the cross. And, and in Luke 23, 39, we're not going to turn there. But the thief on the cross... He, he was helpless. He was guilty as charged. He was put up on a cross. He's beside Jesus. The first thief, what does he do? He, he says, if you are the Son of God, then, then free yourself and free us. See, he didn't believe. If you are the Son of God, then, then bring yourself down and bring us with him. And the other ones that told him, you know, basically, shut up. You know, he's done nothing wrong. And then he said, he said of Jesus, he said, you know, remember me, Lord. He even called him Lord. Lord, remember me when you enter into your kingdom. He places faith in him. Amen. And Jesus said, this day you'll be with me in paradise. See, the difference between the two was one was like, if you are. And the other one is, you are. You are the Christ. Amen. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. You are the Christ. We're going to turn to one last scripture in Acts chapter 8. Acts chapter 8. Isn't God good? Acts chapter 8, starting in verse 20, 26. Now this is a powerful part of the word that I really, you know, it just really illustrates salvation through faith. And this is where, you know, Philip, the evangelist, was, was basically sent to, to speak to the Ethiopian eunuch. It says, Now the angel of the Lord spoke to Philip, saying, Arise, go toward the south along the road, which goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is desert. So he arose and went. And behold, a man of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, the queen of the Ethiopians, who had a charge of all her treasury and had come to Jerusalem to worship. What it says here, he was returning and sitting in his chariot. He was reading Isaiah the prophet. Then the Spirit, the spirit said to Philip, Go near and overtake this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. And said, do you understand what you are reading? And he said, how can I unless someone guides me? And he asked Philip to come up and sit with him. The place in the scripture which is read. This is where he was reading. Which was read. He was led as a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb before it shares the silent. So he opened not his mouth. In his humiliation... His justice was taken away. And who will declare his generation? For he was taken from the earth. He was learning, he was reading about the, the crucifixion of Christ. So the eunuch answered Philip and said, I ask you, of whom does the prophet say this? Say this, of himself or some other man? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning at this scripture, preached Jesus to him. He didn't preach works to him. He preached Jesus to him. Amen? Amen? Now, as they went down the road, they came to some water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What hinders me from being baptized? Then Philip said, If you believe with all your heart, you, you may. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. What got him saved? 
His faith in Christ. He believed with his heart. He confessed with his mouth. So he commanded the chariot to stand still. And both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water. And he baptized him. Now when they came up out of the water, the, the Spirit of the Lord caught Philip away so that the eunuch saw him no more. What, a, what an experience there. You know? It's like he's gone. He got translated. Disappeared to another city. Amen. Woo! Uh, I'm talking, you're, you're talking, that's Pentecost all over again. I mean, wow. You know? How many of you ever see someone just, uh, you know, disappear right before your eyes? You know? Wow. You know what, though? He, he placed his faith in Jesus. And that's why he was able to get baptized. It was his faith in Christ alone. Amen? See, our salvation is built on faith in Christ and not good works. Salvation is a free gift of God given to anyone who believes and calls upon Jesus for salvation. Jesus is our righteousness, not good works. That's who our righteousness is. It's, it's a person. He's a person. Not what we do. Amen? It's all about Jesus. Our redemption was paid in full. He, Jesus paid it all. We were bought with a price. And that price was the precious blood of Jesus. A lamb that was slain from the foundations of the world. The lamb who took away the sin of the world. And his name is Jesus. And Jesus is the firm foundation. You place your faith on Jesus. He's done it all. And that is the gospel. That is the truth. And that truth is what will set you free. Don't get on the, the, um, the treadmill of good works. Because you can never get off of that one. Place your feet firmly on the rock. Firmly on Jesus Christ and your faith in Him. Amen? Amen? Because it's all on His work and not ours. Amen. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I just thank You for Your Word. I thank You, Lord, that Your Word tells us that we shall know the truth, and the truth will make us free. I thank You, Lord, for the free gift of salvation. I thank You, Lord, that it's all about Jesus and not about us. And I thank You, Lord, as we place our faith in Him, that we become children of God. We become new creations. We receive the righteousness of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for it all. And we give you all the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' precious name.